Hello there, age cuties. Happy Monday night. Who's out there having a ball at their holiday party right now? Are you getting your party on with your conservative co-workers? Throw up your dancing emoji so I can see you. And take a shot for me, please, because I'm working tonight. Who else is working right now? Who's on the night shift? Throw up your, I don't know, moon emojis? Show me your moons in the chat. If you're working with me, we're about to put you all to work, though. Get those brains fired up, people. Welcome to the game, everybody. The game that makes it rain. I'm Sharon Carpenter, your Queen of Quizabeth, but who's gonna take the crown tonight? It's Movie Monday, and the theme is box office bombs of the decade. Yes, the films that you probably didn't go to see, so this could be tricky. You are playing season 12 right now, because it is great for your health right now. That rhymes, right, kind of. This season is 21 days long, with the finale taking place on January 2nd. We are giving you that extra day to recover from New Year's. We're very thoughtful over here. Here's what's coming up this week. On Wednesday, warm up your vocal cords, because it's musical trivia. What's your favorite musical? Mine's Grease. That's the one that I want. Join us on Wednesday for that. And then Thursday, will the force be with you? Always, it is Star Wars night in honor of the rise of Skywalker. HQX trivia and words will be Star Wars themed. Time to Skywalker on those Zetas. Now have you heard, there's a completely new game show here at HQ. It's called HQX and it's about you and your creativity. It's super simple to play, no trivia questions. All you need to do is take pictures with your phone to compete in photo challenges then you just tap on the photos from other players that you like. The player with the most likes wins. And we can't wait to see all the cool stuff you come up with. Join and play this Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. Then Friday, HQ Tunes brings you top artists of the decade. Gotta have some Swifty in there. Maybe some Cardi B, a little Drake, Riri, B, Shawn Mendes, that kind of thing. That's happening on Friday. Now tonight we have 21 questions for you with prize questions at Q6, 11 and 18. We have millions of HQ coins up for grabs and cash at the final question if you make it that far. Okay, you bad movie buffs. Let's get you warmed up and ready for those box office flops. I'm gonna read you a mean review and you have to guess which movie the critic was blasting. Are you ready? Here it goes. I've had mosquito bites that were more passionate than this, this undead, unrequited, and altogether unfun pseudo-romantic riff on Romeo and Juliet. Harsh words from Mark Salov at the Austin Chronicle. Which movie did he mean, though? Was it West Side Story? Was it Twilight? Or was it Titanic? How dare he? These were all great movies, ultimately, weren't they? You went for Twilight, and you were absolutely right. Critics eviscerated Twilight, but the movie still made more than 390 million at the box office, so there. Okay, next one. The film could have turned out worse, but only via the addition of Tom Green, a Tom Green cameo, or an accident in which the actors caught on fire. Now that's a candid key tips for the AV club. Which movie does he mean though? Catwoman, Sharknado, or Glitter? Which one was the critic reviewing? That was a really harsh review. That one would have made me cry if I was on the receiving end. But which one was he talking about? You went for Sharknado and Nardo. You are wrong on that one. He was actually talking about Catwoman. Glitter was horrible too. The answer is Catwoman. Okay, we have time for one more. It's a movie made for people who can't be trusted to understand any storytelling unless it's not just spoon fed, but ladled on pile tie and explained by a montage and voiceover. Ouch, that's Kate Erbland at Indie Wire. Which movie did she skewer? Life itself, Gilly, or a guy thing? All oh, these critics can ruin your life. Just like that. In one paragraph, they can take you down. You went for Geely. Uh, you were close, but no, this was life for life itself. And it was pretty damn accurate. Well, that was a blast, wasn't it? So let's count it down. The feature presentation is about to begin. Okay, players. 
it's about that time. The first movie is set to begin. Grab the caramel popcorn, because here we go with Q1. Who is this character? Check them out. Is that April O'Neil, Shredder, or Michelangelo? Who's the bald dude? It's a close shave for him this morning. Looks a lot like Shrek, doesn't he? But that orange blindfoldy thing is a dead giveaway. It's Michelangelo, of course. Cowabunga dudes. 79,000 of you knew it. He's a party dude. He's Michelangelo in the rebooted sequel Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows. The 2014 movie did well. It's 2016 sequel. Not so much. No. Q2. In The Lone Ranger, what animal does Johnny Depp wear on his head? Crow, bear cat, or gecko? None of these are really suitable for headgear, are they? What were you thinking, Johnny? If you weren't for Gecko, you've been watching way too many car insurance commercials. It's Crow. Use your head, and you did 64,000 if you did. Johnny just can't stop from making crazy costume choices. When playing Tonto, he was inspired by this pic right here and wore a crow on his crown. Who wore it best? Neither, methinks. Now, you want to level up as high as possible this new season. At a point multiplier to help you reach your next level, they work on all the points you earn in this game. Go on, then. Do it. And do this, because it's Q3. The first person to try and adapt the source material from John Carter into a movie also worked on what? Looney Tunes, Flash Gordon, or Tarzan? Three great things to work on. If you weren't for Flash Gordon, I'm your Ming the Merciless tonight. Looney Tunes is what we are talking about right here. Oh my goodness, oh my gosh, look at that savage. Horrible savage here on Q3. 60,000 of you out, uses extra lives. 13,000 of you got it correct. Bob Clampett, a director of Looney Tunes, tried to bring it to the big screen, a Princess of Mars, the first novel from the John Carter series. See all that men are from Mars, women from Venus stuff? That was just lies, lies, lies. Q4, in Collateral Beauty, how does Will Smith reach out to the concepts of time, death, and love? Writing letters, HQ chat, or carry a pigeon? The HQ chat is the best way to get any message across, but Will chose writing letters. It was written for 49,000 of you. It was a rocky time for Will Smith, right? Grieving the loss of his daughter in the movie, he writes letters to time, death, and love, and then acts surprised when they show up. We weren't buying it. No better way to handle a savage question than with an extra life. You can use as many as three in one game. Do you see it on your screen in front of you? Go ahead and tap to buy one. You can also buy extra lives throughout the game by tapping on the heart below. They'll work on every question up to Q18 in this game. All right, are you ready for Q5? Yes, you are. Dark Phoenix is part of what franchise? X-Men, Avengers, Despicable Me. Dark Phoenix, that's my middle name, funnily enough. If you had any hopes of rising from the ashes, I hope you picked X-Men, because that is the answer. You X'd out that question, 48,000 of you did. Sophie Turner's first leading role sucked, to say the least. We don't know whether or not the Dark Phoenix actually died in the movie, but we do know the movie died at the box office. All right, we're moving on to our first prize question of the game. If you get this right, you have to make a choice. Either take the HQ coins and run or stick around for the next one. Remember, HQ coins can get you those power-ups like erasers, word super spins, or extra lives. Here goes, Q6. Who played the patriarch in We Bought a Zoo? Ben Affleck, Matt Damon, or Chris Pratt? There's a zoo out here. It's a movie. Remember when people used to say that? We are talking Jimmy Kimmel's arch nemesis, Matt Damon. That's who we're talking about, 45,000 of you knew it. Feels like a thousand years ago, doesn't it? But we did it this decade. We bought a zoo. Well, Matt Damon did. Why did you buy this place? Why not? The sharks were the best thing about that movie. And that's right, there were no sharks. But we've got HQ coins for you right now. What do we have on offer? We are offering 78 coins to 45,312 players. Five questions until the next 
prize. 78 coins. Who wants to be an early HQ winner? Well, you're gonna bet on yourself and hope you make it to the next prize question. Make your choice, stick to it. 9,388 early winners chose to take your 78 coins. Well done, 38,829 still in the game. Let's go, people. Q7, solo a Star Wars story included. An appearance by which character? Princess Leia, Big Skywalker, or Lando Calrissian. I just rewatched the prequels, and they were worse than I thought. Now, if you went for Luke, you better Skywalk your ass right out of here. It's Lando Calrissian. You landoed on the right answer. 29,000 of you did. The Star Wars prequel only includes three characters from the original. Han, Chewie, and a young Lando played by Donald Glover. Han doesn't meet Luke or Leia until A New Hope, of course. Your Star Wars fans know this. Q8. This music video was released to promote what film? If you are unsure, no more back and forth. Is it The Great Wall, The Last Airbender, or 47 Ronin? She has a lovely voice, doesn't she? Pretty good song. But even a great song didn't get us to see the Great Wall. Did you make it over this one? 24,000 of you did. This Matt Damon bomb completely collapsed at the box office. But at least it had one hell of a song performed by Jane Zhang and co-written by Maroon 5's PJ Morton. All right, Q9. In Pixels, Adam Sandler faces off against what classic character? Legolas, Mickey Mouse, or Pac-Man? Imagine, but you don't have to imagine it was on the big screen. Adam is no stranger to sucky movies, including this one. He faced off with Pac-Man's face. Yeah, you did. 27,000 of you moving up to the next level. Adam Sandler battling giant classic video game characters was about as good as you'd expect. Shame Pac-Man didn't just gobble him up. Should have done. Q10. The controversial space romance passengers saw Chris Pratt do what to Jennifer Lawrence? Wake her 90 years early. Poisonous supplies or eject her into space. What? That's not very romantic. Critics found it hard to buy their romance because he woke her up 90 years early. It's just not cool. 25,000 of you staying woke. Not even two of the biggest stars on Earth could get critics to board passengers. Chris woke up Jen 90 years early, dooming her to a life alone with him. Wake me up five minutes early and you're doomed. Hopefully you're not here though, with our next prize question is Q11. Which entourage characters actor directed Gotti? E, drama, or turbo? Or Gotti, as we'd say in the UK. Doesn't sound quite as hard, does it? Gotti. Have you got it? If you tapped on turtle, get back in your shell, will you? It's E. You get an A for that one, 11,000. Oh, that was tough. Entourage and Gully share a few things in common. Main characters from Queens, Nepotism, and Kevin Connolly, AKA E, who starred in one and directed the other. Now you must choose a direction. We're offering 450 coins to 11,119 players. Seven questions until the next prize. You can get an extra life, I believe, with like 400 coins and still have something less over. So what you want to do? Tap and make your choice. 4,927 players chose to take 450 coins. Early winners in today's game, 12,531 of you standing strong as we move on to Q12. Which cast member of Cowboys and Aliens had previously played a cowboy? Harrison Ford, Daniel Craig, or Olivia Wilde? Whoa, Nelly. He was the love of my life as Han Solo. It's Harrison Ford. Who doesn't love Harrison Ford? 7,019 if you got it right. When you're fighting aliens, it can help to have an experienced cowboy around. Harrison had starred in three previous westerns that may have helped in the fight, but did nothing to boost things at the box office, sadly. Q13, which M. Night Shyamalan film won the most Razzies after Earth, The Last Airbender, or The Visit? That's the award you never want to win, a Razzie. 
He's got the coolest name in Hollywood, but that didn't stop him raking in those Razzies with the last airbender. You didn't come last there, 4,986 of you. M. Night had a rocky decade. All three films earned him Razzies, but the last airbender scored five of them. It's now considered one of the worst movies ever made. Q14, in the book of Henry, a super genius child guides his mother to do what? Kill their neighbor, find hidden treasure, or cure cancer. All right, geniuses, what will it be? If you're looking for a movie to lift your spirits, this ain't it. Kill their neighbor is the answer. You slayed that one, 3017 of you did. The man behind Jurassic World tried his hand at drama with the Book of Henry, where a boy helps his mum plan to murder a neighbor after he dies of cancer. Heartwarming stuff, I tell ya. Q15. In Elite Battle Angel, Christoph Waltz plays a cyborg scientist with what part-time job? Bounty hunter, dog trainer, military shop shooter. Extra cash never hurt anyone, even cyborg scientists appreciate a little extra income, right? So he doubled as a bounty hunter. You slayed again, 3,861 of you. On top of being a renowned cyborg scientist and a single dad to his cyborg daughter, Alita, Dr. Dyson is also a bounty hunter, and that's what I call a killer work ethic. Q16, which Megan Fox movie does she say no one should ever see? The Dictator, Jennifer's Body, or Jonah Hex? She's got quite a few of these, obviously. You know it's bad when the main star tells you not to see it. It's Jonah Hex. You broke that hex, 2,311 of you did. Megan Fox, she gets a bad rap. She wasn't the worst part of Jonah Hex, but she still hopes no one sees it. Jennifer's body, however, is low-key kind of awesome, isn't it? Q17, we're getting close. In Jupiter Ascending, Mila Kunis' character discovers she has the ability to do what? Hear people's thoughts, teleport, or control bees. I want to see you ascending in the game. Which secret power would you rather? I'm sure it's not control bees, but that is the answer here. You are the bee's knees, 2056 of you. There's a lot going on in Jupiter Ascending, from Channing Tatum's rollerblading werewolf to Eddie Redmayne's maniacal villains. Then there's Mila Kunis and her obedient beehive, better than Beyonce's. We're buzzing on to our next prize question, the last one of the game, it's Q18. Which movie blamed atheists for its poor critical reception? Exodus, Gods and Kings, Heaven is for Real, or Saving Christmas? Well, you have to blame somebody, you're not gonna blame yourself, are you? If you went for Exodus, it's time for you to exit the game that way. Saving Christmas, did you save yourself? 1,110 of you did. Wait, you mean critics hated a movie where Kurt Cameron plays himself explaining why he loves Christmas? That must have been those pesky atheists. Do you believe? Let's see what's in the bag. And remember, no more uh, extra lives after this. We're offering 3,000 coins to 1,110 players. Three questions until the prize. Well, we've got some cash to give away. 3,000 coins, that's quite a lot of coins right there. You want those coins or you come in with me? 317 of you chose to take the 3,000 coins. 793 still in the game, three questions until the prize. Let's go, Q19. Which of these does not appear in the Matthew McConaughey film, Serenity, a fish named Justice, child video game creator, or extraterrestrial aliens? Try to remain peaceful and serene, I know it's tough. We kind of wish it had those aliens in there, but no such luck. Aliens is the answer. Yeah, 158 of you got that correct. We lost a lot of you there, that was a savage. Savage. Matthew seems like a normal fishing boat captain obsessed with a fish named Justice. And then we find out he's a video game created by his son after he dies. I'd love a plot twist. Q20, just a few players left. Which of these actors' characters is not physically hurt in life itself? Oscar Isaac, Antonio Banderas, or Olivia Wilde? Don't hurt nobody. Yet another cheery movie to pick up your mood. This guy's in a great mood because he's still in one piece, Antonio Banderas. Did you band together? 97 of you left. People are dropping like flies in this movie and this game. Well, Antonio remains unharmed till the end. 
physically, at least. Hopefully you can too, because we are heading into the final round with 97 players left in the game. We've got $1,000 in the bag tonight. Good luck to each and every one of you. Q21. What film beat Geostorm at the box office in its opening weekend? A Bad Mom's Christmas, Gem and the Holograms, or Boo 2 and the Dear Halloween? This is not an easy question, but it's not supposed to be. When we say beat at the box office, we don't mean the number one spot, not by far. The Gerard Butler-led Geostorm had a $120 million budget, but Tyler Perry whooped Butler's butt with the epically titled Boo 2 and Medea Halloween for the win tonight. We have 69 winners. You smash it. <laughs> Congratulations to our 69 winners tonight. Look at that, you're taking on $14.49. Not bad for a Monday evening, that is for sure. Nancy Kirby, well done to you. One-eyed somebody over there. You got two eyes from what I can see. Nunny 205, little cutie right there. We've got Rory Bello bellowing with joy right now. Over that $14, I would be too. At Soraya Sun, the sun has come out for you tonight. Well done to all of you guys, 69 of you tonight. Awesome, awesome stuff. Carson CA as well. Yeah, well done to you. Well done to all you HQTs. You came, you played, you slayed. I'm Sharon Carpenter. Here's where to find me. Stop by, say hi, guys. Don't be shy. Now, tonight's game has been special for a very particular reason. This game is in memory of HQ co-founder Colin Kroll, and we all miss him so, so much. But his memory lives on through his innovations, through HQ, through everything that comes next, and through you. Thanks for playing. <laughs>